This is KUCI 88.9 FM. You're listening to Cine Show from 4 to 5, hosted by yours truly, Nima Golbavai. Alright, so today we're going to be talking about, this afternoon, a fantastic film I just watched that I was very impressed with, and I thought I should give it the full praise it rightly deserves. Um, before then, I'd like to ask that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, that is Cineshow, K-U-C-I, just search it up, it's C-I-N-E-S-H-O-W, one word, K-U-C-I. Um, you can find all my episodes there, as well as guest hosting, where I talk about and play some music for you. Um, I would also like to ask that you tune in next week on a Wednesday, where we're going to be actually having, um, and it's quite late, but I also saw and pre-recorded for you my review of Dial of Destiny, which is the god-awful Indiana Jones 5, the Disney princess movie. Indiana Jones basically just is dead at this point, just like Star Wars. Um, But yeah, I gave my full review there. But uh, this afternoon we're going to be doing an actual great movie that blew me away, actually. No pun intended. (laughs) Uh, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. I expected it to be like... Very good, but, like, ultimately, I didn't think it would have a big effect on me. However, I would consider it a great film. Give it a 9.5 out of 10. Um, And I loved a lot of stuff about it. Um, And I didn't... I can't really think of anything I didn't like about it. Obviously, it's not flawless, but... There are no, like, major flaws that stuck out to me. Although I've heard a lot of critiques of it, but I don't really agree. So here on my computer screen, I have some stuff like um, the plot synopsis so I can, uh, sorry, I'm trying to find that right now, so I can read through it for you guys and tell you what I like and what I don't like. But like I said, I did not like much. Damn, I can't find a plot synopsis. I guess it's a new movie. Alright. So, let's just like do a, a general overview of the topic of the film. Um, many of you may not know, or many of you may know, the story of how the atomic bomb was created. Um, basically, obviously, America was the first to make an atom bomb, and the push was that basically Germany was likely going to develop one because of like the findings in physics at the time with Einstein and whatnot allowed for weapons scientists to like make a bomb that had never been so powerful before. So in the United States a group of scientists headed by Robert Oppenheimer um um, what were tasked to secretly develop an atomic bomb to defeat Germany. Um, so this is the topic of the film. However, the film starts before then, and it sort of goes in and out between, uh, quote-unquote, present day, where Oppenheimer is being tried, not tried, but he's being accused of sort of treason. Um, but then we go back into the past and we see him as a student and we see he's kind of like he's like a gray character how I like to call him he's definitely not a paragon of virtue but he's not an outright bad person Um, and he's sort of like this he's a man of contradictions like he doesn't really He doesn't fit into a box easy. He is, like, associated with lots of communists and has, like, a communist brother and, like, 
communist love interests and he sort of has an intellectual curiosity with communism but it's sort of you can't really box him in as a communist um and in the present day part of the film we see like it's in the 50s and the 60s i believe like somewhere between then where Oppenheimer is being accused of being a secret communist because on the Manhattan Project there was a Soviet spy that sort of relayed information to the Soviets to allow them to build their atomic bomb and Oppenheimer's reputation is under question and then as we progress through the main story we get to see how he gets to that point but you know what? I gotta pull up a plot synopsis because I'm gonna miss a lot. Oppenheimer plot summary. Let's go summary here. Man, I can't find any summary. Oh, here we go. All right. Nope, that's not a summary either. All right, I'm not going to get it. Uh, oh, my God. Okay, no, I'm not getting it. This is a really lame start to this episode. All right, so we were introduced to the character of Oppenheimer through his, like, friends and associates who are sort of these communist figures and... A lot of his friends want him to join the party, but he sort of says, like, no, I'm not a communist. And they're all like, y you hang out with communists, but you're not a communist. And then he, there's some sort of romance scenes with this woman who he doesn't marry, but is sort of a holdout through the entire film. And she's sort of an emotional problem for him personally. He's sort of attached to her, and she's kind of, she's also attached to him, but she's kind of mean to him, and he's kind of nice to her, but they do love each other, and it sort of boils over near the end of the film, and I'll get into that. Um, then we start getting into, like, the science part of the film, and this is like a classic Christopher Nolan space brain movie. So it's a lot of, like, intelligent stuff, a lot of information about physics. And I don't know much about physics, but I thought it did a good job of explaining really complicated stuff without sounding really boring or stupid. Because sometimes you got these movies that try to explain, you know, like, lots of technological stuff, and it just sounds like just nonsense. This movie did a pretty good job. Um, so yeah, we have these, like, classroom scenes where Oppenheimer is sort of around great minds, and this eventually moves on through, um, to him at the Manhattan Project where he knows what physicists are the best and, like, who will get the job done and whatnot. Um... Another thing I like about this movie, which is, um, I was reminded of the interview I did with my friend and my teacher, Daniel Levine, who teaches the Jewish text class, and he's going to have a class, I believe, this upcoming quarter, so I recommend you take his class if you want to learn more about religion. Um, it's a class about the Torah, also known as the Old Testament to Christians. Um, furthermore, it talks about other aspects of the Jewish religion, like the Talmud and um, sort of like rabbinic opinion. Um, however, I, w I was thinking of something he told me that stuck with me, and it was a story from a concentration camp where... Um, like a rabbi was saying to all the prisoners, like 
that were part of his congregation at the camp. And they were like, you know, God is dead because no good God would ever allow this to happen to us. And like the rabbi said, basically like, yeah, God is dead. And he agreed. And then he said, like five minutes later, he says, okay, come in the room. It's time for afternoon prayer, mincha, what it's called. And then his, his uh, congregation says, like, he says, um, but you just said God is dead. Why are we doing the afternoon prayer? And the rabbi says, God may be dead, but he did command us to do the afternoon prayer. So it's basically this aspect of Jewish religion and culture that it's like duty comes first. And then from that, questions emerge you do you question after you do your duty first and then you can like complain after so i got that feeling from this movie a lot i loved the character of robert oppenheimer in a way he was an anti-hero but not really he was a gray character in the sense that he wasn't light or dark but it was this really interesting man that i really you do feel sorry for him, but he's sort of this like dutiful man who is genuinely loyal to his country and does his job like to a T and does it very well. Um, and he doesn't complain, but afterwards he sort of, you know, like you do first, you complain later. Like the rabbi said, he starts like running his mouth and opposing stuff after he's done with his job and like saying his true opinions and all that stuff. So I, I like that part of the movie a lot. I loved the aspect of Jewish culture that was evidenced, even though obviously it has nothing to do with the religious aspect, but it's an interesting thought nonetheless. Um, so, um, let's see here. Let's talk about the cast a little before I move on to the actual, like, part where they start assembling the team to build the bomb. Also, another thing I should say before the cast, this film is, like, there's a lot of, like, use of sound that's pretty genius and a lot of use of, like, horrifying imagery and like stuff like that because it's trying to portray Oppenheimer's mind as like chaotic and unhappy but brilliant so there's a lot of like stuff from physics that are like flashes with very loud sounds and that sort of culminates with the dropping of the bomb where it all comes together however let's talk about the cast uh, is it Killian Murphy or Cillian? I think it's Killian. I like this guy a lot. He was so cool. He was like the perfect Robert Oppenheimer. I thought he looked awesome in this movie. He was such a great actor. He sort of brought this, like this quiet strength to the role. Um, because Oppenheimer sort of develops from this character that, like I said, is just this dutiful scientist sort of doing his job at all costs, no matter what he thinks about it. He does his duty and, like, is a patriot, but at the end, it's kind of almost like a free speech movie where the government is trying to silence him for speaking his mind, and he's sort of, like, he's very stubborn, which is another, you know an aspect of um, Judaism that I quite like a lot. Um, so, yeah, so Killian Murphy, he he's like a quiet, he gives a quiet performance, but it's so powerful. He's like this really likable character, and even though he doesn't fight back a lot, you feel like he's sort of like a brick wall. Uh, it's really cool to see. Emily Blunt is the other character who is Kitty Oppenheimer, his wife. I love Emily Blunt. Fantastic actress. She's awesome in this movie. Um, my favorite... This is my favorite movie with her in it, but another great movie 
is um I think it's called Edge of Tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just check here. Yeah, Edge of Tomorrow. It's a great action movie. It's sort of like Groundhog Day meets uh, some space alien movie. <laughs> it's a great action movie. Then we had Matt Damon, who did a very good job. Uh, he had some funny lines. Um, and then another standout performance. I loved Robert Downey Jr. as Louis Strauss. Um, I especially liked his like ending arc where he it's revealed he is the villain of the film. Um, very calculating and mysterious figure played subtly by Robert Downey Jr. And I thought that was great. And it didn't come off too Iron Man-ish. Not saying I don't love him as Iron Man, but not for this movie. Um, and then there were like some other great performances throughout. Performance is fantastic. The acting is awesome in this movie. And just beautifully written. Really like natural. You get to like like the characters. You get to know where they stand on a lot of issues just through them talking. And it's very subtle. Speaking of getting to know the characters, it is a three hour film. Although I thought it would, I thought it didn't drag at all. I really liked it. Um, it, and I was sitting in a terrible seat, like quite close to the screen, and I was pretty uncomfortable. But it ended up really good. I'm sorry, I'm, my voice is kind of shaking because my room is kind of cold. My apologies. All right, then we get to like the making of the bomb where Oppenheimer is basically confronted by Matt Damon's character, um, Leslie Groves. And Oppenheimer is sort of, he's sort of like, contracted for his knowledge and like relationships but also his he sort of has this personable confidence to like everything he says and he he's sort of unbothered by people's authority in a way he's like he doesn't he doesn't shy away or he doesn't pale um in the face of like a lot of medals or authority he sort of always is a he's always himself and the general likes this although he mentions that he has dubious relationships with many communists and as their relationship deteriorates Oppenheimer suggests that he was only hired so he could control him because he had dirt on him but I didn't get this feeling uh, as the development of the bomb continues um we basically have more like science talk and more theory that sort of builds on the tension of the film because they're talking about how they don't exactly know what's going to happen when they they actually build and deploy this device like at one point they're questioning whether the atmosphere will light up when they drop the bomb so they don't know and there's this undercurrent throughout the film where it's like theory is one thing but you don't know until you try and that's like the great tension that just keeps building and building and building to an amazing crescendo where the bomb is actually dropped and I love the part when they assemble it it was so cool I loved how it was um, edited and I actually saw this in 70 millimeter. It was very cool for me. It was really nice. Shot really well. I loved the movie, and I loved how it used black and white, too. Um, I was very impressed. It didn't feel like a movie that came out in 2023. And the theater was packed, and I was very happy to see people actually were, you know coming out to see 
a movie, and I think it's going to do a hell of a lot for Oppenheimer's legacy and his fame. Um, I don't know. I really got attached to the character. He was, He's just a cool dude. Like, I love the singularity of his mindset that he does everything. Not even that he ever does everything his way. He more just speaks his mind no matter what. Even if it's on, like, small issues or big issues, he just tells you what he thinks. And he doesn't really care about the confidence. And his wife complains that this is his, like, great naivete, but it makes him very endearing that he's sort of not bothered at all by the consequences of life. Um, So the film progresses, and we get the tensions of building a weapon of this caliber. We get walkouts from scientists. We get pressure from the government. We get compartmentalization for security. We get threats of spying. We get scientific quandaries. Um, And then there's this, like, ticking time clock where they use marbles in a jar to illustrate the plutonium and uranium they have to build up before they can drop the bomb and it just keeps going and it's building to the tension throughout the middle part of the film and then finally they're ready to drop it and there's like lots of little explosions before then like test ones with dynamite and stuff and they do this great effect where it's like the sound barrier is broken I think and it's delayed which is very cool Also, it wouldn't be Christopher Nolan without using all practical effects, which was greatly appreciated. It looked wonderful. He did a fantastic job. It looked like a movie that was released 20 years ago. It looked very natural. The actors were on point. There was no, like, trying super hard to convince you of anything. It sort of just laid out how things are and you can make your own judgments about Oppenheimer as a man or whether the bomb dropping was justified or not certainly you get to feel the horror of the the event which it definitely was a horrifying day in history but you know you have to make up your mind whether politically it was the right thing to do or morally to drop the bomb on Japan But there's also this greater question of, like, Oppenheimer as a man, was he, he's concerned with, like, if he changed the world just by, like, taking part in this and pushing it forward. And then, obviously, Einstein has the same problem where he's worried that because of his science, he may have horrifyingly changed the world. Um, So yeah, they drop the bomb, and it's a success. And it's this fantastic scene. And it's sort of... Afterwards, there are these celebrations where very loud screaming, and it's sort of cut between Oppenheimer imagining the destruction in Japan... And, like, he hears, like, women screaming, and at one point he imagines, like, everybody turns to dust and all this fantastic thing, things. Um, It's very artistic and very, it's very unique. I liked it a lot. But then we get to the last part of the film where the scenes where it was showing the future are sort of the main focus of the movie. Oppenheimer has basically been set up because after making the bomb, he sort of comes out against hydrogen bombs because he views them as like proliferation and that if we make them, the Soviets are going to make them and it's going to bring a lot of danger to the world. And he's sort of a thorn in the government's side. So like Robert Downey Jr.'s character, Louis Strauss, has sort of conspired to take him out but that sort of unravels gradually and it's the final arc of the film where the villain is revealed and Oppenheimer sort of remains steady as the character he is and he 
Sora just says his piece and tells the truth and stays true to his friends and doesn't rat anybody out. Um, and yeah. Sort of ends with this quite chilling moment where Oppenheimer like wonders to himself like if the world if he's the reason the world is gonna end and stuff like that uh, I'm sorry I I should have a plot synopsis in front of me to get this exactly right but the last like third of the film last hour is really an end to Oppenheimer's point as the patriotic person that he was and I think the film suggests and I think it clear he was uh, but they cast a bunch of aspersions about his character due to his associates and his wife and his family members being communists um, and yeah he's sort of like you feel like he's a man that's being un unfairly accused and you it really makes you attached to him and just a brilliant brilliant film from direction to writing to cast I thought the subject matter was pretty dry when I first heard about this film but I was actually deeply interested when I watched it um, I thought like a movie like a biopic movie about a Robert Oppenheimer like why why is Christopher Nolan doing this? But then I watched it and it's like, it's a very interesting movie about like a really interesting guy and sort of a complicated historical figure, which is the best in life. Yeah, I think well done, Christopher Nolan. And there's a lot of criticism that like, oh, it's too long or, you know, it's too pretentious, but I don't think it's pretentious. Yeah, it's a movie with a lot of science in it, but I feel like the human part is relevant too. If it was just about making an atom bomb, like they would just release a book. Um, but no, I thought it was sort of a deep movie about the the horror of the horror of making history let's call it like that and the consequences with changing the world and it's complicated very complicated because in some ways in my personal opinion I think he served his country well and you know provided an end to the war and there's this interesting other aspect where he wa he was building it to defeat Nazi Germany, but they got defeated before the war was done, and it was like his people in the camps. But then the bomb is dropped on Japan because Germany already surrendered, so he's kind of in this weird situation where he's like, was this even worth it? Was it justified at all? Yeah, the film is full of moral quandaries and fantastic acting, um, dialogue, it's the whole package. I recommend you go out and see it. If you can see it in 70 millimeter, go see it in 70 millimeter. And let's get this movie to <laughs> at least match Barbie. Because I hear that movie's kind of a disaster. But I don't know. Alright guys. It's a bit of a shorter one today. I'm going to end with some music um, from Oppenheimer. And... Yeah, tune in next week for a bit of a more negative and sort of jokingly insulting, even though I really hated the movie, review of Dial of Destiny, which was pretty bad. All right, guys, but thank you for listening or watching on YouTube. Uh, this has been Nima Golubai from Cineshow. Um... I'm with you to the end of the line.